on Sunday. The Rams get the win over the 49ers, 20-17, to 17, and it, it, there's only so much of Jimmy G that you can rely on, I think. Uh, it, he, he wasn't awful for the entire game, but when you absolutely had to have it, he made just a boneheaded decision at the end of that game and cost them a shot at the Super Bowl. Uh, bottom line, I mean, that play was as bad of a decision <laughs> as I have ever seen. And it's not like the guy wasn't open or whatever, but when you are getting, uh, when you are in the process of getting sacked, you cannot make one of those crazy, you're, you're not Patrick Mahomes. Let's say that. I mean, it's just that, that the way that the game ended absolutely drove me insane because we had had such good things to say about Jimmy Garoppolo, and that is, I believe, how his legacy will be left in San Francisco because I don't think they're going to sign him again. But we'll see. I mean, obviously, you never know what's going to happen. He, I, But I would imagine somebody somewhere is going to pay him uh, more money than the 49ers will. Well, yeah, I think so, too. And we, we've They've released that he's going to have surgery on his thumb. Um you know, today or, or maybe not today, but he's going to have the surgery yeah. that came out today. Um, what that will affect, I don't know. I don't know. So, you know, I think he'll be somewhere else. The 49ers will have a different quarterback. I don't think it'll be Trey Lance. I don't think so either. I don't think he's ready. I, and I think that's, I mean, it's the main reason why the Packers are still so gung-ho about keeping Aaron Rodgers is their young guy that they drafted in the first round is nowhere close to ready. Like he's nowhere close. It, there's he may have a ton of potential, but he's you can't even put him out there and field a competitive team. No. Like we, the we already thing saw is, it. is that's why I do think that they're a trigger man away from being real good. But, I mean, we've seen it. Oh yeah, we've seen this team with Jimmy G make the Super Bowl and make an NFC title game. And if they had a capable, competent quarterback, I don't even need them to have a great quarterback. I just need them to have a quarterback that won't make mistakes. Then, yeah. then I think, then I think that they can get over that hump and they could win it all. I think they're that good. Oh, most certainly. Uh, Jimmy G in this game, sixteen out of thirty passing, two hundred thirty-two yards, two TDs, and then he had, of course, the uh, the maybe one of the worst interceptions that you can possibly. I mean, it was it was so bad, just so bad. Uh, rushing in this game, Debo Samuel led the team in rushing yards and led the team in receiving yards. He had seven uh, carries for 26 yards. He had four receptions for 72 yards. The fact that they were not able to get the run game going at all it surprised me at least a little bit. I understand that the Rams have an incredible defensive front, etc., but I, I thought that they would be able to get something else going. The fact that they were up 17-7 to late in this game was a, a bit surprising to me, really. Uh, considering that they had not been able to get the running game going at all, all day. So, uh, you know, cheers to Matt Stafford for uh, for getting this thing done. I mean, it, it obviously it wasn't all him. The defense played a large role in this. But Cam Akers, I mean, had 13 carries, 48 yards. Um, you know, this was, they, they didn't make the mistakes that uh, that almost cost them against Tampa Bay. And they found a way to come back instead of having a team come back on them. Uh, yeah. how did, how did you feel about, uh, LA's performance? I'm, I'm, I, I worry about their defensive front against the Bengals, but judging them, not looking forward to going to the next game of what I've just seen the last couple of games, this team plays sloppy. They, they have th this, they seem like a team that is like set up with, I know this is going to be like an insult. I don't mean of stars and scrubs. I think. Matt Stafford, when Cooper Cup or 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 you know Higby or or Odell are wide open, he hits them every time, and his stats look really great. When they're covered at all, and he has to make a great throw, he is he has not looked great. Yeah, and he is he is he has turned the ball over, and he has played sloppy. I wish the NFL would change the rule of the interception. Uh, not because things didn't work out, a fumble, not because things didn't work out the way I wanted them to in this game or anything of that matter. I, I won my bet, which is awesome, so that's fine. doesn't matter. But the rule of the fumble with a quarterback, just because your arm is going forward doesn't mean you're throwing the football. 
Okay. And in that play where his arm went forward and then he closed his hand and the ball came out, like you look in his eyes, he fumbled the football. He dropped the football. He was not trying to throw the ball. And it wasn't a thing where the ball slipped out because he was throwing it forward. He had squeezed it. It started coming out of his hands. You look in his eyes. That's a fumble. I don't care that his arm was moving forward. That's a fumble. And, and he's just reckless with the football. He makes big mistakes in big time situations. This game, he made big plays, but we knew the weakness of the 49ers was their secondary. We knew that all along. And Cooper Cup and, and Odell and anybody else got wide open all day long. Yeah. Okay. They still didn't put a ton of points up. They still had to play from behind. They still struggled to, to, to get points. I think the Bengals defense is going to be a lot better from top to bottom. Okay. They don't have the pass rush that the, that the 49ers have, but they're a way better overall uh, defense. Yeah, I, I I think I could agree with that. Uh, what did you think of the decision when San Francisco was up seventeen to fourteen to punt uh, it? To punt it, you know, it, it, fourth and two, they had a penalty. It was delay a game, et cetera. But it, I mean, they effectively chose to punt the ball there. They, I would say the delay a game was because they punt. They wanted yeah. to punt. Like yeah. they did that on purpose. Yeah. Um, I don't like it. I, I you know, it, it's easy to see that it didn't work out, and I don't like it. They put. He Kyle trusted his defense more than he trusted his offense. And I understand that from seeing the offense, knowing that the offense couldn't run the football and knowing to get those two yards, you couldn't put the ball in Jimmy's hands. You had to run it. And it wasn't close enough for just a dive up the middle or a quarterback sneak or something. You were, you had to get two yards. You got to run a real football play and they struggled to get those. Um, So I, I do understand the, our defense has been great all game. All I need them to do is to be great one more time. And, 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 you know, I, I understand what Kyle was thinking. I don't, I don't know if I agree with it, but mainly because I just don't like playing the game scared. Yeah. That's, that's what drives me insane. If you look early on, uh, they got that first interception, um, or they, they got the interception yeah. on the second drive for the Rams. Uh, they go down they, six plays at 37 yards. They have to punt at the Rams 40. Uh, then you you score a touchdown. You kick a field goal at the end of the first half. Uh, you go into the next half, eight plays, 40 yards, and you have to punt from the Rams 42. I mean, and it, I understand that. I mean, it's fourth and nine, fourth and six, stuff like that. I understand it. It It's just you have driven the ball 40-plus yards on both of those. And then on that one that we just talked about, they drove the ball. Ah, no, excuse me. There was another one. Six plays, 36 yards. They had to punt from the 50. I mean, they, they were able to move the football a little bit and could never get it exactly where they needed. Like, they probably should have had more points on the board if they could have trusted their offense. And they couldn't trust the offense to really get anything done. It was almost like uh, they had it, it, they struggled to move the football at all, and yet they were still moving the football. Like, that's the crazy part about it is you know that they couldn't trust their offense, and yet the offense was at least at swap and field position, right? So it, it's strange to see. I mean, I, could you imagine Kyle Shanahan with somebody that he trusts under center? I mean, yeah, it's, it's going to look different, but the whole game plan will look different. Like, I, I just – I think the reason he wants Lance and he wants a quarterback like that is because – if the quarterback can run, he believes he can build an offense that's almost impossible to stop if he can run and throw. If he can have what he had with one year of a healthy RG3 until RG3 wasn't healthy. Yeah. Yeah, I think, that offense I think was awesome. All, yeah. I think that's all he wants. Um, and he can he could design it all around that. Uh, it's Trey Lance ever going to be that? Man, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't either. I mean, it's, and I can't kill the guy because we just didn't see much of him this year. But what we saw of him wasn't good. And and okay, so can he get better? Sure. I mean, yeah. we started the conversation. I started the conversation of today's conversation, talking about patience at the head coaching position. We might be in a world where these guys are picked so early that they just they do need to sit for a couple of years. I mean, let's remember Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes sat for a year. Okay. 
And, and, you know, he ended up being the phenom that, that we all see had he started a bunch of games in the middle of the season and, and looked like a rookie and looked bad. Maybe we're judging him and killing him. And, and then he surprises us. Yeah. But I don't know, you know, uh, I mean, obviously we'll see. He's still a rookie. He played FCS ball like, and didn't he? He basically has not played in two full seasons, right? Right. I mean, it, it, the the COVID year was a really weird year. He's only played one real year of football, so he might just be incredibly wet behind the ears, right? Super green. So, so we'll see. Uh, yeah. But obviously, like he's not ready yet, so they are going to. I don't think. I don't think he's going to be. If he shows up next year, and he's a a fair to middling quarterback. Okay. If he's somewhere ranked in the, you know, 16th to 13th best quarterbacks in the NFL, then, then we all panicked too soon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. But um, if he doesn't play next year at all, man, you spent three first round picks and, and all these other guys got their rookie starting. And by the second year, they're definitely starting. Oh yeah. Oh, now, absolutely. If they go make a move for a Rogers or a Brady or something like that. Then, then he ain't starting because those guys aren't coming and then playing second fiddle to some kid. You see who the uh, the leading tackler was for the the Rams? Uh, Eric Weddle had nine tackles in this game, uh, four solo. He had one tackle for loss. I mean, it a little surprising that uh, that he was able to to come in there and knock that out. I mean, it you know he's he's played in multiple multiple games now, but uh, yeah, I mean he's uh, he's been awesome, awesome for them. So, uh, so yeah, looking, you know, just at the box score and, and everything else, uh, this was a, this was an interesting game. Matt Stafford, 31 out of 45, uh, 337 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Uh, should be very interesting to see. I, I don't know that we've had a more likable matchup of quarterbacks in the Super Bowl in, in quite some time. It, it's it's real interesting. So I listen to a lot of different people give their opinions on on you know all these shows. I listen to all the popular shows everybody else listens to. It's really funny that all the cocky guys kind of get hated pretty quickly. Joe seems to be likable and cocky. I was curious how this is going to work out for him. You know, like does he become like Patrick Mahomes, where Patrick Mahomes was super likable? And then after he won, he kind of just, and I can't speak for the collective, all the people in the world, but like, I find, I find him super annoyed. I find him, yeah. you know, just, just well, really I think fake. a lot of like, once you've won so much, you kind of become the villain, right? Uh, uh, maybe, but I mean, I, I, so obviously I didn't feel that way with Tom, but, but like even in other sports, I don't have that. Well, this guy wins all the time. And so I hate him thing, you know? I hated Rodgers. Rodgers didn't win all the time. Hell, he didn't win anything. Ben Roethlisberger didn't win for 15 years. Still hated his ass. Like, yeah, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't I don't, know that it's just a, well, they win all the time, so I don't like them, you know. There's something with Joe Burrow where it is he's still considered the underdog, even though he won a college national championship and all that. He, it, and his backstory. Know, like, so the thing I like about it is, is he hates that. Oh, yeah. I like, like, he wants to be seen as, why are you should all be afraid of me. Yes. And he's, and he's still and considered nobody underdog. Is. No, no. It, they should be, but, uh, they but they're not. <laughs> no, they definitely should be. I mean, he's absolutely ridiculous. Like, it's, it, it amazes me every time he gets out on the football field. I don't know how he does it. I, I still have well, no but, idea. So the beauty of this, and I talked about this in our group text, I'll say it here. In, in the conversation before the game, now neither one of these quarterbacks played amazing. Okay. Right. Joe has a couple of escape plays that are just freakish. But outside of that, like it's not like he had the greatest game the world has ever seen. In in this game, I before the game started, when we were breaking down, I was talking about how I thought these two teams were evenly matched. Uh one of the guys in the group, I won't call him out, you know, made the point that, well, yeah, but Patrick looks like just the greatest football player of all time. Like he looks like he's playing at a level, you know, that like, and he, he referred back to 2019 Patrick, yeah. like, like he just couldn't lose. And my argument and my counterpoint was, is yeah, he's playing really, really good. His ceiling is incredibly high. 
but I think we've seen his ceiling. Yeah. And the thing that got me excited was, is we haven't come close to seeing Joe's. No. We I mean, just, it, it, what is this third? Se- no, this is only his second, second year. His second yeah. season, and he didn't play his whole first year because he went out with yeah, got he hurt. Blew his, he blew his knee out in the middle of last year. And so this is the first season where he had a full season with the team. And and it's his. And he's healthy. And, it you know, he hasn't been great, and he's had his flaws. He's had some games where he's amazing. But it's just one of those situations where we, we haven't come close to yeah. seeing what this guy can do when he can get cooking. I mean, he's he's unbelievable. He's just unbelievable. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.